So uh, what I want to talk about is actually no, nothing particularly new, but it's an, uh, an aspect that might that you might find interesting, uh, which is a front end optimization in G Fortran. Now the question, of course, is what is even a front end? So looking looking at how modern compilers are built, you basically have three parts. On first of all, of course, the user puts in the source code, which can be quite often in different languages. This is then uh, translated into an intermediate language, and the optimization then happens mostly on that intermediate language, which is usually called, at least in GCC, the middle end. And this this actually doesn't know a lot about the front end languages, so it doesn't know if it's processing C or C++ or D or Fortran, and it doesn't know about the back end. And the back end then takes this code and transfers it uh, to the different architectures uh, that you have, x86 power and so on. And uh, GFortran is actually a front end to GCC. Uh, so basically what we do is we take source code, parse it, and hand it off to the middle end in a language, which I'm going to show a little bit in the detail, in a little bit more detail later. Now, why would we optimize in the front end? Because uh, the middle end does most of the optimizing. Well, the reason is that the middle end is language agnostic. Uh, some, some people might argue it's C-centric for GCC, but that's actually, that's actually become much better in the, in the recent years. And GCC's uh, middle end operates on a very restricted form, which is called single static assignment, which means that it has variables, lots of variables, but each variable is only assigned at one certain position. And if you, use your, if you set your variable more than once in your source program, the compiler generates a second variable for that. And it switches back and forth. So this is, this is of course, great. Uh, it's, it's not great for writing. I mean, nobody writes in, 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 the, in that representation. But uh, it's a very simple language. And for example, this is great for things like value propagation. So if you set your variable once, you can go through the whole, whole source code and see, okay, this variable only ever has the value of 16. So let's go through, it's 16 everywhere. Uh, so, arrays are sort of unknowish. So, so the, the, the middle end doesn't really know a lot about the arrays. And of course, the front end has the knowledge of the source code and the language, and there are really some things that are better handled there. And uh, to understand what this does, it's uh, actually nice to look over the shoulders of the compiler, so to speak. So what you have here is a very simple program, read in an array, calculate the maximum value of the array, add one to it and print it. And uh, GFortran takes this and uh, makes a parse tree out of this. And you can get the, an option to dump that, in this case, to standard output. And there you see this is actually not much different from what the uh, from, from the source code, you see, okay, the asterisk is translated to unit number five. Uh, I.O. statements are split. So there's, a, there's an initial statement, a transfer statement, or several transfer statements, and then an end statement. And you have the assignment written here where you call a, a subroutine a function, in this case, a procedure which is not, uh, which is then later evaluated. And if you're looking at, the, at, the, uh, at what the front end optimization is doing, you will actually see this reflected in this dump. So if you think, okay, let's, let's see what they've done, or maybe they've done something wrong. There have been bugs there, of course, as in every part of the compiler. You can take a look at that and see. And that's actually fairly easy to read if you know your original program. The second option, which is really interesting, is uh, dump tree original. Because this is a representation, a relatively readable uh, representation of what the compiler hands off to, uh, of what the front end hands off to the rest of the compiler, to the middle end. 
So here, for example, we calculate the maximum value of an array and add one to it. So how would you write this in Fortran or in C? You would initialize it, you would go step through it, and uh, once you've stepped through it, you will uh, assign it to the, to the value. So this is what we do. So this particular uh, uh, function is actually not called by, as a library routine, but it is uh, inlined, so to speak, so as if you had written a de loop. But of course, this is much more convenient, uh, convenient and far less error prone. So one thing where we've put in a little bit of work is a temporary generation. Now the Fortran language is very, very clear on what it does on assignment. First, the right-hand side is evaluated, and after that, it is assigned to the left-hand side. And if anything happens in the meantime, if, if there's any dependency, uh, the compiler has to re resolve it, so this, this is actually uh, maintained. So if we have a statement like the one here on the left, uh, there is always the, an easy way to do that, which is translate it into something, allocate a temporary array, copy it in, and deallocate the temporary array. Because there's a dependency, of course, on the left hand, on, on the left hand side, uh, and that. So that is great, works, but you need twice the memory. And of course, you also need two loops, so that's not really efficient. Uh, you could, of course, also code this as a do loop. But in this particular case, uh, it probably, yeah, uh, I put in this option because uh, I would probably get it wrong doing this manually about 30% of the time, because there, of course, you are not fulfilling the semantics of the Fortran language, because you have to evaluate this first, this uh, thing first. What you can do is reverse the order of the loop, because then you get the, then you get the uh, correct semantics without a temporary. So what do we do? Uh, one thing, of course, is uh, we know from the rules of the Fortran language that different variables cannot alias if they're assigned to, unless there are an equivalence. Uh, what we check for is, for example, that the ranges of the variables do not overlap. So in the next example, you see, okay, one of the, uh, the, the, uh, uh, the expression on the left-hand side uh, starts at i plus one, on the other, on the other hand, it's, it stops at i, so there is no dependency. We can just translate this into a straight loop. The next one is a little, little bit more tricky because we, because one of the arrays starts at one, the other at two, and the uh, greatest common divisor is three. We know again there's no interdependency. We can just translate it. If we're looking at different components, real and imaginary part, for example, that's also, of course, the truth. Uh, easy. We do uh, reverse loops if, if, if it works. And we cannot, of course, just translate a simple loop. But this analysis only goes so far. Uh, so if you're really willing to work on it to write inefficient code, the, the compiler will not be able to find it, at least not there. For example, in the, in the example below, uh, j is two, so one of the methods up there would work, but the compiler doesn't notice that because we do not actually uh, do value propagation in the front end. So if you want efficient code, try to write simple code so the simple mind of the compiler will be able to understand this. And the other point is uh, source code transformation. That is something, there are certain idioms uh, that I found, uh, that we found were actually rather inefficient when translated to GFortran at least. Uh, so this rewrites the internal representation of the source code to what the user should have written, or to be more specific, what the compiler writer thinks the user should have written. Uh, which is why there's an option to turn it off. Of course. So if you don't want that, uh, just use no, F not, no front end optimize. Uh, this is also very good uh, for finding bugs, by the way. If somebody says, oh, this crashes with optimizing, but works fine without it, uh, that's a good idea. That 
this is the first option we should check. Uh, so whenever you turn on any optimization option, uh, this is actually enabled. So you've probably, if you're using GeoFortran, you've probably used this a lot already. And from the fact that there haven't been too many bug reports in the last few years, it appears to be working okay. One thing that we do, for example, is uh, uh, I find myself writing Fortran code like, like the line above uh, very, very frequently. It's just convenient. Just, uh, okay, if any of these quantities is bigger than 0.4, or if any of these quantities is bigger than 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.4, or whatever, that is, that is actually nice, but uh, at least the way GFortran implements it, uh, you will create one or two temporaries for it. So what the compiler does under the hood is uh, rewrite this as if you'd written this with the different OR statements. Uh, we also do this for all sum and product, and there's also a limit of four items in a constructor that we do this for because we found that if it gets bigger, it actually becomes more efficient to, to actually go, go the loop route again. Um, and, but again, this is, this is something that you will see on the Fortran dump original, uh, and on the dump Fortran original version. Then there are a couple of, of things that just cry out to be optimized. For example, if you assign uh, to a fixed length character string, if you assign a, uh, any number of blanks, the result will of course be the same because the standard said this will be blank padded. Uh, so the, if you just, what the compiler will do uh, without this, this optimization is just assign, let's say four blanks and then fill up the rest with blanks. Congratulations. Uh, of course, it will also use a temporary, but never mind. Uh, so basically, the, the, the most efficient way is to use memset with the, with the value of the space. Now, there is no way that any user should have to know this, uh, which is why we put this in. Another, another point is uh, where, where we uh, would actually have fairly poor efficiency otherwise is trim. That's used a lot for all sorts of things. And uh, the way that, the, uh, that we implement our characters is actually we, we use a lot of temporary variables. But a substring, uh, which just goes from one to lentrim, works the same. So replace that. Th then there are a few, a few things where you can actually uh, optimize, optimize comparisons with, with uh, characters. And this, this, of course, also works uh, for not only for fixed but also for um, allocatable characters where you if you put together a and b and compare this against a and c okay uh, that is probably something you could have uh, that probably not too many people will write but uh, you, you also also always have to to consider in this kind of thing automatically generated code uh, so there is uh, yeah and quite often the the uh, automatically generated code is not very efficient. So again, a few things. Another thing that is also quite interesting is uh, implied do loops in IO statements. And that is, that is also, of course, that's a language feature that also goes back, I think, to the very first Fortran compiler ever written. Uh, so what you, what you see on the, on the top left side is actually uh, the way people would have written this, this idiom, I don't know, 50 years ago or, or, uh, or so. Uh, on the, of course, in modern Fortran, you can write what's on the, on the uh, right-hand side, uh, but what, of course, a normal user is not expected to know, nor should a normal user know that or need to know that, is that, the, that what's on the left-hand side is actually translated into, into a do loop, into a do loop of the different array elements. So for each element that you have there, it's a separate library call, which of course is quite inefficient. Just think about uh, what you're doing if you're, if you're let's say, okay, so, so you wanna, wanna uh, save uh, something in an unformatted file for speed reasons. 
and then you get a library call for each each eight bytes or so. That is that is not that is quite slow. So one one of the things that's being done there is to translate this into the right hand form. So basically, the uh, the code then will look like what you see on the right hand side, as as if you had written this this way. And again, when was it introduced? G428, something like that. I think G428, yeah. There is one, one subject which has, let us say, uh, brought some controversy from time to time. And that is, uh, you can, that's the elimination of, of common functions in an expression. And that is actually a rather deep misunderstanding uh, between people who write Fortran and people who come from languages like C. Because in Fortran, functions exist for one, and for one purpose only, they return a value. And in C, a function is everything. So the mere mention of, oh, I can eliminate some function uh, calls based on the return value is something that will bring horrors to people who are used writing in C. It would be like, oh, I can, I, if, if I have two write statements uh, I, or, or printf statements, I can eliminate one of them. <laughs> okay, that's not, that's not going to fly with C, but in Fortran, this is what functions are for. And uh, so the transformation that you see up there is that, uh, okay, you have f, f uh, of x there two times, so you can actually remove that. Now with, uh, with things like int intrinsic functions like matrix multiplication manual or also that is actually uh, not a big deal everybody expects that with pure functions that's also something expects uh, with functions which are not pure uh, this is something that we currently do not do by default I'm, I'm not sure if it's enabled by OFAST but, but not by minus O3 not because the language doesn't allow it. I've actually put the fine print on the right hand side. You can read it yourself. This as if rule is actually uh, quite powerful. But uh, people have been so up in arms against it uh, that we decided, okay, so let's not do this optimization. Yeah, uh, because it's simply, so, so uh, people have to ask for it. So usually that means that nobody will use it <laughs> because uh, not very many people, I think, use that particular option. There's a corresponding warning option though. though. So if you, if you, if you wanna, wanna see if it's actually ever done in your own source code, put in the warning option and, and you will see. Then there's uh, this old, old topic of array ordering. Um, and I think that uh, probably most of the people in the, uh, here in this room and of course in the, in the conference call uh, know how to sort do loops. Because in modern, in modern uh, computers, consecutive access is just so much faster, orders of magnitude sometimes. So for example, if I have a statement like I have here on the, on the left-hand side, you see, okay, so looking, looking at the statement, the K always comes last. Uh, so the K has to be the outermost loop. And I always, always comes first. So that's, that's, where the, that's where the consecutive accesses are. And that's, that's very good. And that of course is also because Fortran specifies that the first index is the one that has the consecutive access. But what happens if people write do concurrent or for all, uh, like, like the one on the right-hand side? The standard says the compiler can choose any ordering because if, it's, if there's any data dependencies, it's the programmer's fault. Okay. And uh, we, we had a, a problem report about that. Where, where was the user chose a certain, a certain ordering and uh, it ran very, very slowly because we just chose something. 
And the other thing is, of course, that, uh, I don't know, other compilers might actually use a different ordering from, from what GFortran uses. So something that works really, really well and fast with GFortran might uh, actually produce horrible code on, I don't know, iFort or whatever. Um, I, I simply don't know. Uh, so we said, I said, okay, I think we need to, we need to look at this and see what we can do. So what we do, what we did is we introduced a sort of uh, counting which way should the, should this be ordered. And the evaluation function is actually quite primitive. It just, it simply looks, it counts array axis, axes in the indices. So for example, here you see in this particular example, you see here the K always comes in last. So that definitely has to be the outer loop. So three and three axes here at position three. J is two times in position two and one and one. So this gets the, the middle and I here in this particular case is, is uh, uh, has the most inner loop axis. So it, it goes to the, uh, it goes to the innermost loop. Uh, so the code will be translated to something as if the user had written that that uh, loop down there. Now, problem is, of course, uh, this is a relatively primitive algorithm. And I actually got, uh, it was actually quite funny, uh, at a GCC's developer conference two years ago, one of the guys walked up to me and said, ah, you're the one who wrote loop interchange code. That's supposed to work, that's supposed to be done by the middle end. But okay, it doesn't work. So, uh, so that was, so, so he, didn't, he didn't actually uh, did, uh, do any bad things to me or, or even look at me strangely, but it was, it was something where in this particular case, uh, the middle end simply hasn't caught up. But of course, the other point is, again, the compiler can be wrong uh, about guessing this. Uh, so there has to be an option to turn this off which there is. And finally, one of my uh, little bit of favorites, and that is the inline matrix multiplication. So why on earth? I mean, there's, there's highly optimized bus routines out there, people who spend a lot of time and effort to do that. Why would one just replace a map mode by simple do loops? The answer is small loops. I ran a few benchmarks with a simple benchmark program here on, on my home computer. And here you see, this is, this is all inlined here, the yellow, yellow dots. This is the GFortran uh, library routine, which is actually fairly decent uh, for a general purpose routine. Uh, and this is what OpenBlast does. Uh, I think they have some sort of fast matrix multiplication algorithm. Uh, of course, there's no way my, my home machine can run 100 gigaflops. It was just calculated from what a straightforward matrix multiplication would have done. So, but here in this end, uh, you see that the inline matrix multiplication is actually more efficient than any of the two alternatives. Uh, so, because, I mean, just setting up the function call and losing all the registers is, actually does bad things. Uh, to, to performance. So for this, it's actually useful. So if you wanna, if you wanna hype, if, if, if that matters to you, uh, then use of course external blast and a highly optimized library, sure. Uh, but you can also tune this, this cutoff point here with, an, with a separate op option. So summary and outlook. So we do a lot of small optimizations under the hood uh, or some, some small optimizations at least, so the programmer doesn't have to be bothered. If you want to see what's going on, dump the intermediate representation and look at it. Uh, inlining ma matrix uh, multiplication, of course, is uh, an, an, a thing that, that if you're doing this a lot for small matrices might be interesting. What's next in that particular field? Now, there are some more optimizations for character handling. For example, putting together two characters does not necessarily have to generate a temporary. 
One thing which I've dreamt about for a long time is, is uh, to have this C-shift formula here to, for, for calculating a second or difference quotient to actually have that effectively inlined, but that's a bigger project. So I'm not, uh, so <laughs> that, that I might actually never get to that. If you have a cool idea, of course, you can discuss it here. You can send a mail to Fortran at GCC New York. You, you can submit an enhancement PR in uh, Bakzilla, of course. Or the, the, the other nice thing is because this only touches the Fortran front end representation, which is, yeah, which is, which is uh, fairly obvious, let's say. It's not, it's not exactly easy, but it's fairly obvious. It's something that is actually fairly relatively easy uh, to implement yourself, which to tell you the truth is why I did it, because I was looking for something to do. I didn't want to touch the backend stuff yet. And so I said, okay, what else could there be done? Thank you. Thank you, Thomas, for an excellent performance. Uh, so we have a few minutes for a few questions. So the first question is uh, about dealing the streams. So is it, would it be possible to implement the native Unicode uh, parser as, it's, as Python is doing? A native Unicode parser for, I mean, we have the, the kind equals four characters. Mm -hmm. um, we don't have, I don't think we have UTF-8 support. Uh, <laughs> uh, but do we? I'm, I'm actually not sure, I don't use it. Uh, but, oh, you mean a Fortran parser? Yes, so the Fortran deals with strings as Python does. Uh, I think I'd, I'd have to look how Python does it actually to, to really meaningfully answer that question. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. So uh, I think what they want is a kind of UTF-8. Okay, so, so UTF-8. Okay, so, so what, what would be the, the point then was, was, would be to write a UTF-8 translator because in the internally Fortran has a, has a uh, uh, as a four byte uh, character type. Uh, and that, I, I guess that would mostly be implemented in IO. Uh, so that is uh, definitely a, a project that would take some work, but uh, would sound doable. I mean, the library is just plain C code. So it's not, it's not that, that bad. And of course, with a, we're all fairly nice people. And if you have any questions, then you can ask us how to do it. Good, thanks. So. There are a few like, practical questions like from people interested in uh, learning how compilers work and how to start with them. So what's the good place to start developing a compiler or understanding how it works? Uh, well, the, 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 we've written a short piece of, uh, if, specifically if you, if you, well, first of all, I'm not a computer scientist. I'm a chemical engineer. Uh, so what I did was mostly, yeah, sort of, sort of browse, browse around and then find some more things. For, for starting with GFortran, there, is a, there are a, short, a few short introductory documents of like, how do you start? How do you go there? If you really want to write your own compiler, uh, I'd say the best bet is do not st start with Fortran. <laughs> Because Fortran parsing is uh, a little bit uh, awkward. The parser that we use is, uh, it tries out things, stores an error message, and if something else works afterwards, it's... So, so I told, again, I told that to some people at the GCC conference and they were like, ugh, <laughs> it's not, not very clean. So, so, but but any, any help, of course, or is, is very much appreciated in, in developing GFortran. Thank you. And then there was a more a suggestion than a question about organizing a crash course for Fortran compiler, compiler development and understanding. Ah, I think that's, yeah. that, sounds, that sounds like a good idea. I think, I think Jerry's on the line, uh, Jerry Delisle. Uh, maybe and, and Nicholas is here in the audience and maybe we can, we can uh, try something like that. Okay, great. And probably the last question. So there are guidelines in our code which expressly, I mean, you can read yourself, I think it's... So which I prevent implicit one. loops and require all loop be explicit. <laughs> are there any per obvious performance impacts from this design decision? So, so basically, they're forbidden, forbidden to use uh, this, this, uh, 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 these, this uh, array syntax of Fortran. Mm -hmm. 
uh, there is no performance penalty of using that for straightforward loops either way. The loops that are generated from Brethe Scalarizer are pretty much similar to the ones that are used in the, in, in the do loops. And unless you generate a temporary for some reason, but then of course you get worse performance with the new syntax. So there's no, there's, there's, there's no difference there.